Good evening. This is a special, special uh, screencast. Um, I just got my hands on the new Steinberg Iconica. And to tell you the truth, I've only played with it like five minutes and I decided to do a first impression tutorial. So here we go. Um, I've got nothing loaded. I've got nothing planned. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm not going to edit this video. So if you don't have patience, move on. This is first hand impressions on the thing itself. So here we go. Um, about the installation, it was a pretty simple process. Um, I just opened the Steinberg Download Center. It needed to update in order to show uh, the new um, Iconica download options. But once I did, it was pretty smooth. Now it's pretty big in size, as we're going to see in a minute. And I was very surprised to see how large it actually is because I appreciate Steinberg and uh, Cubase a lot, but their sound offerings didn't quite, it wasn't quite my cup of tea. They had like good synth, like Retrolog is excellent and Patch Up is great, but the sound, the built in sound of Helion was never my cup of tea. So I was very happy very happy to to see that it came out with something that massive um, which really involves um, something that I like which is virtual orchestration now uh, the Steinberg hub does embarrass embarrass me let's try it again and voila one crash is legit so what we have here is Iconica and you can see the different sizes and Heliosonix SE3 which is the standalone version is supplied with it it's 754 megabytes the string players in 33.73 gigabytes the woodwinds is 51 gigabytes and the brass is 41.67 gigabytes the download was pretty smooth pretty quick the only downside I see to this uh, download method is that I cannot download in parallel the different sections into different drives. So what I've done is like chose the drive here, the folder, and downloaded the section and then changed the folder and downloaded the section, etc, etc, etc. There's no way I found to change it after the installation itself and move the sections to different folders and different drives, which is of course essential to when you really want to put uh, your computer into uh, effort, you want to split the drives. So I hope to get, get it fixed in a future update. It sounds, it sounds like something pretty simple. So enough of that. Here are uh, the sounds themselves. So let's open Alien Sonic SE. Generally speaking, I'm used to working with the contact, used to work with contact, but um, I teach Cubase. I'm a certified Steinbeck tra um, uh, trainer. And I think Helion Sonic is a great platform. But again, then again, the sound itself that comes out of the box were quite embarrassing. But then this is a healthy uh, update to the Steinbeck offering. So what we need now is to push this button here. And um, here we go, Iconica is there. So what we see is we've got like 160 presets, which is pretty big, pretty massive. And you can choose from brass, chromatic percussion, German percussion, guitar and plucked, which is the harp only. Uh, keyboards, which Celesta, yes. Strings and woodwinds. Now um, let's open the strings and play a little bit see how it sounds let's take it's ordered by name strings please let's start with volumes one now I've loaded the standard preset not any individual um, articulation and I have to say that what I've seen the uh, UI is pretty simple and pretty uh, intuitive 
Now, um, if I understood that this is a, a collaboration between Steinberg and orchestral tools, which, we, which is a, a, a software developer, sample developer that I really appreciate. So I've got really high expectations of this. So let's listen to the staccato. which means I have to be in the right octave. And maybe turn my keyboard on. Let's try it again. can hear that his accumulates which is what sometimes happens or normally happens when you sample uh, the room each individual sample contains the room and we contain and we play them all together you get multiple rooms so it does accumulate a little too much his for my taste but then again that's the downfall of sampling right you don't get that with physical modeling the sound itself is the dynamics are quite good soft is soft hard is hard Let's try something else. Let's try the pizzicatos. Oh, and look at that list. Impressive list of articulations. One, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, nineteen articulations. It's impressive. Let's listen to the legato. One of the holy grails of each sample library is the ability to play um, convincing legato. So let's check it out. Let's activate it first. Once again, very impressive dynamic range from soft to fortissimo, a large, um, pretty impressive. Um, the only library I know that has that deep um, dynamic range, that's what's the word that I was looking for, uh, the only library that has that dynamic range, that impressive dynamic range is LA Scoring Strings. So it's nice to have, finally, a library that goes really deep. I like that. Um, let's try the Mercados. Um, I have to push this button up here, apparently. That's nice. Let's try switching the articulations. Uh, let's try the pits. Mm, this note doesn't play. And it is colored yellow. What's up, Steinberg, with this note here? I cannot see any reason that the violins cannot play C to flat b2 flat so there must be some kind of an error here ah it's not an error i've switched the key switch itself when have i done that d0 the only way to learn a library is through mistakes and apparently anything so 
you can choose key switches here apparently and change the articulations down here um so my thoughts about the legato uh, so apart from the impressive dynamic range i'm used to lx scrolling strings which means that the adapt of the legato of lx scrolling strings it's a bit more impressive it's based on velocity there so if you play soft from one note to the other you can really go all the way down to accentuated glissando and i cannot have this in this library so so let's let's say i want i cannot do that which is a shame It's it's a, it's a shame I cannot uh, control the uh, legato speed. That was what I was looking for. So let's check out the sustains, which is basically like the legato, only without the up. Apparently. surprises there um, it's pretty nice not groundbreaking but the um, UI itself is pretty intuitive look I can add another row of articulations which is played simultaneously it's not like pushing the plus button here I guess which physically adds more articulations and I see that you can have up to one two three four five six seven eight Air articulations okay so let's add another row of parallel articulations and let's say I want to switch from the staccato to the pizzicato based on switch and the switch threshold which I guess is the velocity how do I change this number dragon does it work only by clicking Okay, let's try it out. And activate the slot. How do I do this? Oh, click the number here. Mm, ah, switch by velocity. Ooh, a lot of options here. Not the most musical uh, transition ever, but that's uh, my fault. Let's try something more musical. Let's try going all the way from sustains to sustains uh, vibrato with a fade. And now we know that we need this one here, controlled by the mod, mod wheel. Let's see. So now the mod wheel plays a double part, yeah. It also controls the dynamic and also controls the articulation. But you can choose a different MIDI CC and separate them both, which would be probably one of goal to normal situations. Let's try going from uh, sustain to tremolos. That should be interesting. Tremolos, tremolos, tremolos. Here we are. Let's see. Excellent. A lot of options here. Really like the... Yeah, it does remind of Capsule a little bit. Good work, Hendrik. So, let's try something else. Let's go from the violins. The two probably sounds the same. Let's try going for the cellis. Cellis standard. 
And you know something? Let's check the difference between selecting a separate articulation and the standard. Let's go to edit. Standard looks stuck. Well, that might be the difference. The first one does load. Oh, this one loads as well. What's the difference between you two? I think they're basically the same. There are only like different presets of uh, different articulation that's loaded into that separate preset. Well, from what I gather, they're all equal. You could just add um, articulations to each of those presets and do whatever you want. So let's try the Chelly Legato. Okay, let's see if the attack, the velocity, does anything here. Playing hard, playing soft. Bit of a miss here too. A very important thing when it comes to string. Um, and then again, as far as I remember, Alice Corn strings does com it does have that feature. I'm sorry if I compare it to Alice Corn strings all the time, but from my stand of point, it's still the holy grail of of a good sampling sampling uh, string library, where you push um, uh, the velocity controls the attack of the note, which is pretty you know um, logical for a player to do, and unfortunately this library doesn't have that. So I would give the strings around seventy. Mark 70, um, which is pretty fair, you know, it's, it's a good library, but um, there are better things out there, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the price tag, by the way, it's not that cheap, you know, like 70 or so 700 euros, I think, the intro price, which means that the full price will probably be more. It's not that cheap, but then again, it's a horror orchestra. And from what I've gathered so far, they don't uh, offer the separate um, uh, sections by themselves. You have to buy the full Monty, the full bundle. So let's try something else. Let's clear this one here. By the way, I do think that the Helion platform is great and for more intuitive stuff, you know, like layering and, and things that in contact are not that user friendly, like this string here which you can put different sections on different ranges with different velocity controllers and decide which controllers controls what. Um, it's pretty, pretty, it goes deep and yet and remains intuitive. So it's nice to see a good library for Hanyo Sonic. Um, and you know something? I want to try something. I think the greatest selling point for me as a musician that uses Cubase is probably the and note expression support and um, let's try something let's say i want to write a chord with the sustain um sustain 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 here we go so let's record something with the cellos dynamics let's add vibrato just pull up my little core nano controller here And let's do this. Let's tell him that controller. Can I do mid learn to the controller? Let's see. I want to go from the sustain all the way to the. Where is it? Sustain vibrato. And cross it, fade it, 
with uh, no midi learn here. Hmm. Shame. And let's do it with the um, modulation again. something let's try note expression do I have a note expression here tell me that I do is this is what I think it is note expression contour if so this is gonna be huge let's see if it works here's the note expression yes it is it's working shocking what this basically means to the guys who don't use Cubase is that I've just added a controller here. Let's let's just verify that it is what I think it is. Um, velocity, yes, it's gone. This is amazing because it means you could do switch the articulation on a note level, not on a channel level, and you can do polyphonic stuff that no other library could basically do within the confines of a single MIDI track. So what I'm doing now is changing the contour of the vibrato only with this note. Let's select this one here and no vibrato. All the way to vibrato. And there are no snap. Let's do it freely like this. Start with vibrato and go to Sensa vibrato over here and please show the note expression data this is one of the greatest things ever about Cubase note expression and finally a library that makes use of it let's add vibrato to this one gradually adding It's hard to hear it. Let's listen to the separate note. Amazing. Amazing. This is amazing. Because you basically can do anything you want now and add up to how many? How many? How many have we got? Uh, oh, here we go. Eight. Eight slots of note expression. This is crazy. And I guess I can use it in other places here too. I don't know. Um, okay. By the way, this is a mixer which holds the close mic, tree mic, AB, and surround. And there, I saw on the Steinbeck webpage that they do have a video that demonstrates how they sound. So I won't go into too much details about this, but let's just have a general listen and maybe take something else. Let's limit the search to woodwinds and go for the flute and go for the piccolo standard and take a short articulation. Back here, let it load. It does take a lot of time to load. And I do use SSD drive, so not too much, but okay, that was a combination of the close and tree. Let's see the close mic at all. And it came pre-panned. Interesting. Okay. Let's try it or, um, close large, close small. Pretty impressive um, selection of mics, you know. closed sound more sharp hmm. 
the tree mic. Very good sounding mic, the essential mic. Let's try the AB. Now you have to solve it by double clicking. Something weird. More of a wider sound than this. This is more centered. This is more from the sides. Then the surround. I still don't understand the trick here. I have to double click or single click. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Hmm, okay. Very large sound. And all of them together. Don't need a close mics. And it stays consistent between the different articulations, I guess. Yeah, that's logical. Let's listen to the legato. Shrieky, but that's a piccolo, right? It's pretty decent, pretty decent indeed. Let's listen to the flute. Flute. I won't go over all of the instruments. Just a quick, you know, impression. Um, let's try the flute, legato. Load. Here's the legato. Oops. This is a pretty good. And I can see that you have some sort of control here on true release, legato release, legato plus release, plus release. Go figure out what it, which is which. Let's listen. Hmm, very unnatural, yeah. My guess is that here they faded the legato sample itself, and here the the sustained part, I guess, of the the sample, and here that the actual the edit the actual release uh, sample, and off. Have none of these. Okay, interesting. So I guess legato and release, please. Um. Okay, that's about it for the flute. Let's go for some brass. Brass, brass, brass. Here's the brass. And take um, the trumpet. Trumpet solo. Why am I working so hard? Trumpet. Trumpet standard. From what I've heard in the demo, it sounded like you reminded me of a mariachi trumpet, trumpeteer. I don't know why. Something that had to do with the vibrato, which was mariachi style vibrato. But let's check it firsthand. Does seem to be some sort of a round robbing here in the attacks. It's gone and it's back. It's gone and it's back. Yes, some sort of a round robbing here. 
even though I don't see this one here going round, which if I'll choose a short articulation, I've noticed that you can see that it jumps around between the round robins and you can even customize if you wanted to random exclusively or just random, cycle up, cycle down. So here on the legato, there's some sort of round robin or random thing going back on the attack portion of the sample. I like the vibrato, it's full of character. Very soulful. But once again, it's a shame that it doesn't come with a playable attack based on, based on velocity. Let's try to do a simple trick. Let's try adding a staccatissimo or staccato, a staccatissimo, and see how it sounds. Not bad. But it's hard to control unless you're a very good player. Which I'm not. But you're gonna get present uh, results from this uh, layering method. So it's pretty good. Let's try section, section, section. Let's try for tam tam horns, French horns. Um, standard. Let's see how it sounds. It loads up pretty quickly and then on the end point it's waiting for something to happen. Roll the drums. There we go. Let's go for the legato patch. Transition is not amazing. A little too abrupt for my taste. Yeah, watch the mezzo of piano to the fourth end. Something a little uh, it's not not that smooth, is it? Let's try the section. Let's see if they cover for each other. Maybe it would be better. Horn sections. And I do try to be, you know, like put it to its paste and, and really find the, the, the small finish and fine details which I normally seek in a new library. I usually check the cross fades and the legato smoothness and the round robins and the attacks ah, this is a crescendo patch the sound itself is not over bright as you will usually find in more you know all the latest libraries, I guess, for most of the sample developers, which goes for the more shiny, um, epic sound, which I personally hate. So, the sound is more round and warm. <laughs> Once 
once again. Don't really like the transitions here. Let's try something else. Uh, so enough of the brass, I guess. It seems like it's... I would mark it as 70 again. 70. 70, which is not too good, not too bad. It's nice. Let's try something else. Let's try the... Mm, the woodwinds is for now the best part of it, I think. I would grade it at 80. 80, 70, 70. Let's try the guitar plucked and uh, which I meant the harp, harp standard. And everything I say, you know, it's only a first impression. And as I know, a lot of the first impressions are misleading. You get some, you know, correct and very valuable insights when you first try something out because you're very objective. But there are some things that you have to learn through time and digest and appreciate the workflow. So, so far, the best part of what I can figure here is that it's note expression uh, compatible. And that in itself opens the whole um, uh, world of options. I cannot wait for the day that contact, please, native instruments, that will support and VST3 and note expression. That would be awesome. Let's hear the harp. Once again, very classical sound, not high-end hyped um, type of uh, uh, EQ'd sound. Let's try press de la table. again between the mezzo piano and forte you, you've heard that watch the scale here watch this one up oh. not smooth too abrupt um okay let's try something else the harp is nice let's um try the 40 system and you know as with everything you have to find the strong points the sweet spot of every instruments and everything every sample library and, and play within these limits so if i know that this harp has that certain weakness but i do like the sound so i won't write um that um a musical part that requires it to, to play on its weaker uh, areas which basically means that you have to write for the samples that you use. I usually don't get uh, to write to real players, so it's even more important for me because this is the end product. Nice. 
And that was a gliss in F minor. Let's see what happens if I remove the finger in the middle of the gliss. It jumps to the release portion of the sound. So I guess once you run a gliss, hold it until the end because it's apparently pre-recorded glisses, it's not programmed glisses, which is what I think is, is, is the right thing to do when it comes to glisses, because it's extra real, right? So, very nice and useful, and I've seen that they have like whole tones and minor and majors and all keys and even pentatonic, I've seen somewhere here that they have the pentatonic scale. Where is it? Or was I imagining it? Did I imagine it? I don't know. Either way, harp is nice. Um, I will give it about graded at 65, 70, I think. My go-to harp is Orange, tree, orange uh, tree Samples harp, which is quite good. And I also like... Um, the new harps of orchestral tools which I think is amazing very detailed and I like the sounds so better harps out there but once again you know I don't think it's the right thing to do to, to compare each of the presets to a whole standalone product so you have to remember that this is a bundle and as a bundle it does offer a wide very wide variety of sounds let's go for the final section or no we have two more we have the keyboards and percussion which I have great hopes for so the keyboard only contains a cellista let's listen to this one where is my pedal one second please This video is as rough as it gets, right? So here we go. It's up an octave. Yeah. Pretty nice. Very usable, nice cellist. And let's go for the percussion, drums and percussion. Snares, up to four snares. Let's just listen to one of them now. Understand it now. It's pretty decent. Let's try the second snare. Let's check if they are equally mapped. So let's try putting the first snare here. And oh, these are all active at the same time. Now I understand. So I can dismiss those. Okay. So this is like all of them at once in one preset. Okay. So let's put here a snare number two and put them on the same MIDI channel, which you do from the MIDI here, and mapped across the same range. I'm not touching the range. Let's see if they are equally mapped.
Yeah, it's nice. Let's add the third one. And if while well, we are at it, the fourth one. And put them on the same MIDI channel. And maybe in the mix, you know, like pen them a little bit differently. So here's a wide snare ensemble. Ba -ba -da -dum. I still didn't gather which one is the endless straight roll. Because they're. It's a shame. I like long, endless rolls. I get it. They are controlled by the mug wheel. Very useful. Um, let's try the timpanis. Timpanis. Let's erase everything here. How do I do that? Reset all slots. It wasn't too hard. Reset all slots. Reset. What good it is? What what good it is if it doesn't work? No. Reset all slots. You slut. It doesn't work. Okay, so forget it. <laughs> um, let's exchange it for something else. Let's put the da -da -da timpani. Let's be more efficient. Tim. P timp. No timp. Timp. Ah, it's chromatic percussion. Ah, there's another section. Um, timpani standard. A very important drum. Um, reset slot doesn't work as well. I must be missing something. Remove program. Oh, okay. So it's not a slot, it's a program. So remove program. Haven't really used that option before. So back to the timpani. mallet roll and now we know that mod wheel yeah there will, uh, will always be you know like certain locations with it will sound like two timpanis like here because it cross fades between the different samples but I guess in a busy um, orchestration, you won't you know, arrangement. You won't really notice that. So medium mallet hits. Very usable. Oh, and there's, there, there was a choke here somewhere. Hmm, it's pretty good. It's more convenient than CC11 on, on let's say, east-west platinum percussion, percussion that I use. You have to pull down CC11, but this one has a choke, which means you can musically mute the notes. And what does these two down here is ah, the articulation switches so it's pretty good very good timpani um so we listen to the snare of the timpani what else have we got here reset reset everything 
What else have we got here on the chromatic percussion? Xylophone. Oh, let's see. Basic but nice, sounds good. Vibraphone. Sounds good. The vibrato sounds very natural. And uh, Temple Box Marimba. Marimba sounds more interesting than Temple Box. Let's try this. <laughs> Definitely different sound. Very hard. Something nice. It's pretty good. Um, I would give it an overall mm, grade of, I would say, 75. Not really high rent, um, but then again, these are just first impression, and first impression are don't always contain that whoa factor. What are these, Crotalus? basically sounds like a Quetola, so <coughs> it's good. Um, okay, enough of that. So, is there anything here that I haven't went through? Brass, chromatic percussion, drum percussion, guitar plug, keyboards, strings, and woodwinds. So that's about it, you know, like, I went through the different sections, only scratched the surface, but I did managed to get you know like a very good impression of how this library sounds and here are my conclusions it does offer a very vast um, range of articulations and I haven't heard all of them but what was important to me is to judge the following the legato quality um, is nice it's not amazing you don't have any control that I've noticed and sorry if I missed it and it's hidden there somewhere but the ui is pretty intuitive and i didn't see anywhere you know like very good labeled legato speed controller so if i've missed that i'm sorry steinberg but if you don't have it it's pretty shame because there are certain passages that you just have to have that and i understand that you know you only want wanted to go that deep but I would want to have um, legato speed control so the legato is nice no legato speed control as far as I can tell and the short articulations are all nice and another thing that's missing from the legato is 
the attack portion. The velocity doesn't do anything to the attack, which looks to me like, you know, uh, something that has to be like a basic property of a modern string library. And it doesn't have that. So it's a shame. Um, what else can I say? The all capsule like um, the UI and articulations control here is very, very intuitive. <clears throat> Sorry, very intuitive and pretty simple and straightforward. So I like that. It's even easier than the context version of Capsule, you know. And I'm sorry if I keep comparing it to Capsule, but it's not only because I know the orchestral tools are behind it. It even has the same colors, man, you know. And the dynamic sign here reminds me of orchestral tools. So you can see the touch there. Um, and it's pretty good, really good. So, Legato, we talked about it. What else? Um, uh, the release portions sounds pretty good. The crossfades are disappointing. Sorry. But the uh, transition does sound, on most cases that I've checked here now, and I swear to God I did it the first time here with you so you can have me as objective as I can be. The Legato transitions at the dynamic crossfade are uh, leaves much to be desired, as they say. And overall, when you think about it, it's not a cheap library. It does cover a lot of bases, and it will be an excellent, uh, you know, more than a starting point for anyone who doesn't have a main library. So as a main library, I would give it like greater than 70 um, I don't think it's more than that, I'm sorry. But uh, it's a good main library for beginners and maybe a nice supplement for those who um, um, already have it all, all and just want to add, you know, like more layers and more thickness. I do like the sound. The playability leaves much to be desired. So these are my conclusion. I'm sorry for, you know, bragging or no um, uh, mumbling. That was the word I was looking for. And I'm not going to edit this video. I'm going to have it as raw as possible because this is the truth and this is who I am, how I sound. So thank you very much for checking this video out. I hope you like uh, my videos please feel free to check them out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And my other videos are more polished because they are edited. And as a concept, I didn't edit this one. So have a great day and I'll see you soon.